guys, good evening. How are you? Welcome to our Sunday edition of our weekly get together. This is Deanne from This Farm Girl Cooks coming at you live from DeKalb County, Illinois. And I'm gonna just tap into my computer screen so I can see as people join. And as long as you guys can let me know that yes, you can hear me well, and yes, you can see me then we'll get started in a minute, but this should be going on in the kitchen nook. So this is for our private community. Um, I kind of bounce back and forth between both groups and it looks like it's showing on my screen if you're joining. Hi Tara, can you hear okay? Give me a thumbs up or a, or a hello. Um, because tonight we are going to be talking about fridge organization. Um, mine looks all shiny back there, but it's actually a needing of a clean. <laughs> <laughs> but I decided to keep it pretty realistic and uh, I didn't want to clean it and have it look like some kind of perfect uh, perfect fridge so um, I don't know why it looks so shiny it is just maybe the way the light is hitting um, you know though back before I had um, the two youngest kids I used to wax the fridge <laughs> you can wax it and it keeps fingerprints off for like a month um, but I don't have a whole lot of spare time to wax the fridge these days. Maybe um, maybe someday I'll get back to that or maybe I'll just decide to have a life and not um, wax the fridge. <laughs> so, okay, so Tara, you're saying that you can, can hear and you can see, awesome. So what I wanted to talk to you guys tonight about is um, about fridge organization. So with the new year, I feel like we all start out so fresh and excited and we want to like take control over all these different areas of our lives. And one area that we can do that is through our um, kitchen management. And so people are always asking how I organize my fridge and how I keep track of our foods and things like that. And so I thought, well, I'll just bring you guys into my kitchen and show you how I do it. Every family, of course, is gonna do different things differently and wanna do things in a different way. But if you find one or two things that you like that I do and you decide to implement them into your, um, your own kitchen management, then that's awesome. So um, for those of you who are new, I know we've been growing exponentially here in the community, which I love because I know it's a group of people that um, are excited to be here and um, I've seen people asking questions or sharing what they've made and that is awesome because that is exactly what my intention was for this community um, and so for those of you though who are newer um, my name is Deanne Frieders and I'm a food blogger and farm wife here in northern Illinois we farm corn and soybeans and I'm married to my husband Ryan we farm with my in-laws and we have four kids ages 16 to 4 um, and I share keeping it real recipes using simple ingredients you can find in any grocery store, even in your small town grocery store. And um, really just try to simplify, you know, dinner time, uh, meal time in general. So that's what I'm here for. And I'm always open to suggestions for things you guys wanna see on the blog, um, things like this. This was a special request from somebody who actually asked if I would do this. And I said, what a great idea. I'd love to. So, um, so anyway, yeah, so that's about me. So let's go ahead and get started. And what'd you guys all do? I'm gonna just make sure this is good. What'd you guys all do this weekend? Did you do anything fun? We went bowling today and I broke triple digits. I think I ended up with a 104 or something like that, which is good for me. And um, anyway, we had, we had a good time bowling. We had the, the little kids having fun and then the grownups had fun. So it was a good day. Um, and we were supposed to get this monster snowstorm that never happened, so we kind of kept waiting for it to roll through. Got up for church this morning and there was like hardly anything on the ground, so it was very bizarre. Um, but I heard, I think it was Iowa maybe. I think I heard Iowa got a bunch of snow. So okay, so I'm gonna go a little um, off. I'm gonna take the, the camera off and I'm gonna show you guys my fridge. Before I do that, I will address some questions that, um, that I know um, this particular person who wanted this um, this live um, had. Tara said finally took down the Christmas tree. We took ours down, I took the ornaments down like a week ago, um, but then my husband, um, he was out of town for a week and I thought about putting the Christmas tree away by myself and then I thought that sounds really hard to do by myself. 
And so I waited till he came back and he did it and I was scrubbing toilets. So it was all like fair game. <laughs> he did the tree, I did the toilets. Everyone was happy. What can I say? It's the simple things. So, um, and other than that, I don't know what we did this weekend. I picked him up from the airport Friday night. Saturday, I basically cleaned all day. That's, that's how we live around here. Okay, so um, one of the questions was, how long do you keep your food in the refrigerator and how um, do you track that? So every food is gonna have different um, time that it can spend in the, in the refrigerator. And this is kind of my guideline, okay? And I'm gonna turn this into a blog post eventually, but if you wanna take notes, you can. Um, because you guys know sometimes I have the best of intentions to get things right up and it doesn't always happen. But um, hard boiled eggs, um, those I would say keep up to five days in the fridge. Um, leftovers, three to four days. Um, after four days, I'd say they've got to go pretty much whatever it is. Um, things like um, cheeses, it's, it varies for every single cheese. We all know that the use by date or the sell by date is just kind of like a recommendation, kind of like with milk too, right? Like you can always do the sniff test um, or the sip test if you're brave, but um, I find that we always use up our milk before it goes bad. But with cheeses, it's usually a visual thing. If I see some mold growing on it, um, you know, it, it, then I know, I know it's time to go. And same thing with produce. If it starts to get mushy, if it starts to smell bad, um, they're all different depending on their moisture content and what kind of food they are. If your oranges start to shrivel up and look really dry and wrinkly, chances are they're gonna taste really dry and wrinkly, so you're gonna wanna get rid of those. But then um, what I do, so let me, uh, let me grab this. So I will say I was going to grocery shop today and I didn't get around to it. So my fridge is a little more barren than usual. So if it looks like it's um, not holding a whole lot of food, there's a reason for that. But what I like to do and what I found is, okay, first of all, clear containers. Use things that people can see there's actually food in there. Um, and I actually have opened up other containers before that somebody had eaten some food out of and then just put it back in the refrigerator. Um, <laughs> empty it's been a while but it's happened i was like who would put an empty container back in the fridge right but it has happened but what i like to do because a lot of times um certain people in the household will not it's a lot of work to open up the container and see what's actually in it and so i try to make it as easy as possible so that our leftovers get used that we don't waste our food and that people can find what they're looking for. So clear containers, I like to use freezer tape um, or painter's tape. Um, and it's a little different than masking tape. I like it because it's not quite as sticky. So it doesn't um, leave a residue and it doesn't come off. Um, it's, it's easy to peel off uh, when you go to throw things in the dishwasher. So I actually just write what it is, chicken, and I write the date, so you can have two schools of thought here and you do what works for you, but you could either put the date that it went in and know, okay, it's gonna be good for four days, or the eat by date, and that would really be an eat by date. So this one I know is good until the 14th. So that's how I do it, because I don't have to like do any math. It's okay, is it the 15th? Well, I probably don't wanna eat it. Is it the 14th? Yeah, it's still good, okay? So I just do it super simple with a, um, the, the tape and the marker. I have seen post-it notes that you can buy. I'm gonna just make sure I'm catching all the comments here. Um, I have seen post-it notes that you can buy to stick on here, but I figure like why spend money on a dedicated post-it note that serves one purpose that's going in the trash. But that's just me. Um, and I've also seen write-on containers and that's kind of cool too, but I have enough containers. I don't really have a desire to buy some new ones that I can write on, so. Um, Plus, we all know the struggle is real with the Tupperware cabinet, right? Like, less is sometimes more. So that's how I track what is in my refrigerator. I will say as a side note, I'm not covering the freezer today, but for those of you who are trying to keep track of what's in your refrigerator and freezer, I don't track what's in my refrigerator. That's my visual, I can do it. Because the turnover in the refrigerator is so high, you know, we go through so much food in there, 
And truthfully, it shouldn't have so much food that you can't see everything that's in there anyway. Um, because, well, from a practical standpoint, if I, try, if I throw way too much stuff in my refrigerator, it almost like, sometimes like the, the spinach or our lettuce will freeze and things like that. So like it, you know, it's, it's no good when that happens anyway. So I try not to overpack it. And we do have a fridge in the garage for things like our sodas and um, desserts and things like that that we don't need um, right, right away, okay? But for my freezer, that's a whole different thing. You guys know, somebody said, though there was a hilarious comment the other day that somebody said, oh, I wish, I wish I could remember it was. I don't remember, she said she thought things went in there to hole up and die. Um, and then I said something like, yeah, I think that's where the lost socks go to. Um, because you know how it is, you can put stuff in the freezer and it doesn't come out for like two years. And then you're like, what is this? And by then it is totally petrified fruit, right? Like anyone else, thumbs up, thumbs down. Or is this just me? Um, so what I started doing was I keep a freezer inventory sheet, not for my fridge, but for my freezer. And so when I put meals in there, or I put something besides the typical staples, like a pizza or ice cream. Um, <laughs> those are my two staples. Um, but if I put things in there like a lasagna, or I put things in like, um, oh good, I'm not the only one, I'm getting thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you. I was like, oh gosh, I hope it's not just me. Um, but I will keep just a simple spreadsheet. It can even be handwritten. Just, and then you just track as food goes in and out, you know, cross off what's on there, um, add what you're putting in. Um, and like I said, it doesn't have to just be for freezer meals, but even if you buy, um, you know, meat, let's say you picked up chicken on sale and you have packages of chicken or ground beef, um, or you have, like we do, a freezer full of beef or pork, you can track what's in there. So when you sit down to meal plan also, you're gonna know what's in your freezer. And I could probably do a whole session on freezer organization. Um, but it is really a good tool. And then the other thing that I'm thinking of, and for whatever reason, lasagna is on my mind, obviously. But even things like, let's say you're at the store and you see a ready to cook lasagna is on sale, okay? We have all picked up a ready to cook lasagna or stuffed peppers or whatever. Like something where we're like, okay, this is just that go-to that I'm gonna need on a busy night. I'm going to shove it in the in the freezer and not have to do another thing with dinner, okay? But track those things when you put them in your freezer too, because those are like your Hail Marys. Those are like your little lifelines when you're like looking at that sheet and you've just had all you can have and then you're like, oh, thank you. There is a Stouffer's lasagna in the freezer and you will be glad because you will not remember that. Trust me, you will not remember it when we get stressed, our brains totally just like flatline. I think there's gotta be some kind of like scientific reason, I don't know. But when we get stressed, we forget about all these things we've put into place. So we've gotta have some systems that we use to um, remind ourselves, right? Okay, because we can't always have that friend who's like, don't forget, you've got, you know, like how you have a friend and they'll be like, remember, you're supposed to go ahead and do some diffusing and take some deep breaths and go for a walk. And you know, so um, that's like the kitchen equivalent. Um, Meredith saying famous lasagna cups even. I mean, yeah, I know those are your favorite, Meredith, the lasagna cups and you can freeze them. And I've had several parents say that they love feeding those to their family. So that makes me so happy. Okay, so I'm gonna take you guys for a walk in my fridge. Now, before I do this, I will give a disclaimer. One, Saturday, I cleaned my fridge. Two, I found hair in my fridge. It happens. It's shameful in a way, but then I was like, I don't know how it gets there. I don't put it there on purpose. I'm sure I can't be the only one that finds random hair or what crumbs in the fridge, but they were there. And at first I was like, Deanne, like what kind of ship are you running here? You've got hair in the fridge. Not like a lot, just like a stray piece or whatever. So all I wanna tell you is it happened to me. So if it happens to you, you don't have to feel the fridge shame, okay? Cause it happens. It's like the crumbs in the silverware drawer. We don't know how it happens, but it does. So we take care of it and we move on with life. Now, when we enter this, I cleaned it Saturday morning. 
it is Sunday evening. I cannot be held responsible for what might have gone on when I wasn't monitoring this fridge. And it is pretty sparsely packed right now. So if there's any flaws, you guys are going to probably see them. But I know you'll love me anyway, right? Okay, so we got that out of the way. Tara said there is hair all over my house. <laughs> oh my gosh, we have a Dyson. And when that thing, like the little canister whirls around, it is fascinating because we vacuum frequently and I'm always amazed at the stuff that we pick up. <sighs> oh, anyway. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how I do my stuff, okay? All right, there's my house. Okay, nobody get dizzy. Okay, so this is the inside of my fridge. And I just realized I'm, everything's gonna be backwards. All my food labels and stuff, I'm gonna try to point to bummer, but that's okay. Um, okay, so there it is. But I'll show you how I organize it and why it works for me, okay guys? Okay. Let's see, this is backwards, okay. This is where I keep our cheese sticks and our baby bells. I put them in a container. This is actually a, a container that the lid mysteriously disappeared to. I didn't buy a special container, but I repurposed it and now it is our cheese container. Why do I have a cheese container? Because I feel like it needs to be visible so people remember if they're wanting a healthy snack, this is there, they can grab it um, a little bit better than maybe goldfish or something they would normally grab. Okay, these, this, so this is kind of tricky because I'm doing this backwards, but this, favorite, favorite, favorite. I use these in my pantry, I use these in my refrigerator, I use these in my basement, but what I love about this particular one, um, you can find them on Amazon, you can find them at TJ Maxx for really great price. I get really excited when I find them. <laughs> I was there tonight and they have them. Um, this one I like, there's all sorts of different sizes, but see how it goes all the way to the back. So like, otherwise this space is just like dead space. But because this goes from the front to the back of my refrigerator, it is wonderful. So we can even, if we're all eating breakfast, let's say on the weekend or on a busy morning, I can just pull this whole thing out and have yogurts for people and they can pull what they want. Then I pop the whole thing back in the fridge and people don't stand there looking at the fridge like it just hatched some kind of new food that they never knew existed with all of the electricity going out. Okay, <laughs> this is tomorrow night's dinner. Hang on, it's yelling at me. It's mad that the door is open. Speaking of wasting electricity, um, okay, this is tomorrow night's dinner. Why is it on a dish towel? It is on a dish towel because otherwise condensation as it thaws gets on my, on my um, shelf and looks gross. So I keep it wrapped up in a towel. Then the towel goes right into the washing machine when the meal comes out and a problem. I've got some, oh, gotta go this way. Okay. Chicken broth, labeled. Potatoes are left over. This is normally our leftover shelf. So this chicken goes here. But I try to keep all the leftovers on one shelf so they know. I resisted labeling it because I don't know why. I just thought that'd be overkill. But this is where I try to put the leftovers and the way our fridge works is I can expand it when we get more than that. But I try not to do a lot of layers of stuff, but this way it does have a place for more leftovers to go. But this is kind of like the quadrant for leftovers. You guys still with me? I said I had a low connection, so I'm hoping that's okay. Um, over here is like randomness, but eggs, things that I would go in purposely for, ricotta. This isn't like my day-to-day -day stuff that I'm gonna be like in and out of, okay? gonna move on down my favorite part and I started doing this a couple years ago is the lazy Susan in my fridge and it is wonderful because otherwise what happens is all this stuff gets shoved back in the corner and you forget it and then you go buy some more garlic or you go buy some more salsa because you you know forgot that you had it so the play the Hershey's syrup is centerpiece <laughs> Lots of times I'll have olives and stuff. I do usually keep lemon and lime juice just in case I don't have um, fresh, um, you know, fresh juice or whatever. 
Sarah, yay! Okay, you can still hear. Loving my Aldi stuff. Yes, I am like a walking advertisement for Aldi. <laughs> Um, I have even done where there have been two of these. I had one at one point that was con and had another that was, you know, like the regular stuff. So anyway, really, really love this. This is not a special fridge Lazy Susan. It's just a Lazy Susan. This is my like special little beverages. I've got mint infused tea and some kombucha. And then I've got our milks and our juice over here. Veggie drawers, pretty standard stuff here, right? fruits and vegetables. I do like keeping like a little bowl or something for the, the, these things. So they're up front and I can remember, um, why, what I have. Okay. And sometimes I have bins kind of like the upper one you saw to do like different kinds of fruits and vegetables, but I think I needed it for something. Oh, I know why I redid my cheese drawer. You got, <laughs> hang on. I got to turn this around. Let's see. Okay, yes, I redo my cheese drawer. I think it was a Friday night activity and that's how wild I am. Okay, carry on. Okay, cheese drawer. What I did going back to school this semester was I did our lunch meats and stuff, but they're in a bin. So when it comes time to make sandwiches, people can pull this out. Again, way easier. And even though there's this little slider thing in here, Everything gets shoved towards the back and I lose it. So I love that this sits there really nicely. Same thing for our shredded cheese. So this one is, let's see, this is supposed to be in the sandwich department, but you know, I can't be on fridge patrol all the time. Um, but this is where I keep my shredded cheeses because they serve a different purpose usually. And it's really nice to just go to one place and have my mozzarella and my cheddar and everything. Ah, there's it. And then this is our sausage. <laughs> and hot dogs but that's how it worked for us but you guys totally can think about how it would work for you um okay Emma yeah 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 okay then um the door is pretty standard we've got our butter um fingerprints on there see we're human um I try to keep all our salad dressings I even have homemade salad dress dressing in case anyone needs Greek and then the jam, because we use that every day. I don't know why it goes there, but it just does. So this is like all of our dressings. Then this is all of our like ethnic condiments. Yes, they are grouped because otherwise I forget I have them. Sometime when I'm like, hey, do I have teriyaki sauce or do I have sweet chili sauce? I know where to look for it. And the maple syrup's there. Again, random. I don't know. Maybe the syrup should be by the jelly. It's just where it is. And then this is like everything you need for burgers hot dogs, whatever, that kind of condiment. So I try to group everything alike. This is like the random side, but still kind of makes sense. We've got our sriracha, red sauce, Worcestershire sauce, <laughs> randomness. So that is the inside of my fridge. So I'm gonna spin this back around and pop right back down here and just see if there's any questions um meredith yes for sure the lazy susan in there yes such a game changer and that's amazing once you like start thinking outside the box you can use them for cosmetics you can use them for a lot of different things so so that was i mean you know not like earth shattering um to see the inside of my fridge but that's how i organize it um, the two or three things that I like the most that I feel like help our family the most is is um, I love the lazy Susan I really like to pull out yogurts and the little kids really enjoy helping restock that because um, I usually go to Aldi and just buy like a flat of yogurt because there's three six nine what a dozen maybe maybe there's 15 but I think it's 12 and I know that they like peach and they like cherries so I just buy like that and boom it's done um, and then also um, being able to pull out the meat and the cheese tray. It's like instead of multiple times opening and closing the fridge, you just grab what you need, set it out, and, and use it. So I did write down a few tips if you guys are looking. I'm not sure that you're going to do this on a Sunday night. But when I was cleaning the fridge this time, I actually did come up with some recommendations for you. So now is a great time. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments, and I will come back to those before I tie up for the night. But here are the things that 
sound obvious when I say them, but when you, when I can tell you from experience, <clears throat> if you don't think it through, um, sometimes you forget these things, okay? So A, if you're gonna clean out your fridge, schedule it in conjunction with your garbage day, okay? That's always good, especially, it's not so bad now when the weather is cold, but when it's hot, you don't want smelly, stinky food out in your garbage. So schedule cleanup when you're gonna clean it out because I did find old cheese, I found some um, condiments that I was kind of not sure of which year they came from and so therefore those um, went away. I found um, a zucchini that was no longer even looking like a zucchini. Um, so anyway, that stuff had to go. Two, do it before your shopping day. So you gotta schedule it. Here's where we get like into our logistics, but you're gonna schedule it before your shopping, before your garbage day and before your shopping day because you don't wanna have the whole thing loaded up with food and then have to pull everything out to clean it. And then you've got like all these groceries everywhere, okay? Um, three, clean top to bottom. So if you're gonna wipe the shelves down, start at the top, if you're gonna pull the shelves down and give it like in the wash, like in the sink with some dishwater, go top to bottom. Um, you know, you just take shelves out one at a time. You take out the, um, take out the stuff from the top shelf, wash the top shelf, dry the top shelf, put it back in, put the stuff back in. Um, it's a lot less stressful than having the entire contents of your fridge, which X amount of dollars, right? How much money is that? Um, that you have sitting out there just like waiting for you. Um, so it's nice if you just do it one shelf at a time. Um, let's see. Okay, remove expired items. We talked about that. I really like designating an area for leftovers. That's really helpful for me. Um, and then label the um, leftovers with the date and the name. Um, and what does this say on the last one? I wrote it, I just can't read my handwriting. Oh, okay. So I put vacuum the fruit and vegetable drawer. Sounds really weird, but when I went to clean it out this time and I was really paying attention to how I do this, um, there were little red and green pieces of plastic that were like from an avocado, well not an avocado, um, a bag, like a mesh bag of apples, or maybe when I had like pulled open the lemon bag because I bought five of them, um, maybe like a little bit of that plastic or debris went down. So anyway, it was super easy to either take like a um, could take like a dustbuster thing, or I just took an attachment and vacuumed it out first, and that makes it so much easier to clean it if you're going to wipe it out or even take it over to the sink. You don't have all that gunk that you're um, what that you're dealing with. Um, so those were my tips. Sarah, does the painter's tape do okay in the microwave? Um, yeah, don't microwave it with like if you're going to microwave the container of food. Chances are if you're microwaving it or reheating it, it's because you're going to consume it at that time. So like I would take off the tape. Um, if you're otherwise like in our house, I would portion out, let's say there was a container of soup, I would portion out, you know, whatever I wanted and I wouldn't reheat the whole thing, right? So I wouldn't put the, the tape in the microwave. I would just take it off before because um, then chances are it's going either into the sink to be washed or into your dishwasher. So, um, but I can tell you that I have forgotten to take it off when I put it through the dishwasher before, and this is the freezer tape. This is Duck, Duck brand, and it did not, um, it did not mar my dishes. It actually just came off. It just basically removed the adhesive, and there was a piece of tape there, and I was like, oops, I forgot to take that off. So. Not the microwave situation, but it is a dishwasher situation. All right, any other questions? And if you guys have anything you'd like me to cover again um, and talk with, just let me know. I'm happy to do them. Um, and I need to remember the gal, Jill. Jill was the one who wanted this video, so I need to make sure that I tag Jill in this. So if there's somebody in the group that you know would like to watch this video, you cannot share outside this group. Um, but you can't, um, but you can, uh, you know, tag somebody that you know is in here if you know that they'd like to watch this, okay? You're welcome, Sarah. So there you go. That is our, um, our Sunday get together. I'm planning another one for next week. I haven't decided what the topic is. We've got Super Bowl coming up, we've got Valentine's coming up, or we could do, 
um, something totally out of left field. So just let me know guys. Um, I did send out a newsletter this morning that had um, some awesome recipes using chicken. Um, it's basically like a two for one deal. So check that out if you haven't opened your newsletter already. Um, some good tips in there and some resources for you. All right. Well, I hope you guys have an awesome night. Thanks for tuning in and we will talk to you real soon. Okay. Bye guys.